This video will review the Excel skills you need to complete case number 7. The Excel functions that you need for this case are logical functions. If, nested if, VLOOKUP, and an OR, MATCH, and INDEX. So let's begin by starting with a very simple IF function. An IF function allows a selection from two choices. So in this example, if salary is more than 50000 increase the salary uh, by the assumption value in C4. If not, increase it by the value in C5. So there are two possible choices, but only one logical test. It helps to use the insert function feature when you are filling in a simple IF function. There are the three argument boxes. So we start with a logical test. So we select a single cell that we're looking at first. In this case, it'll be D10 and compare it to greater than 50,000. Do not put commas or currency symbols in this number inside the logical test. In this case, it's true. The value in D10 is greater than 50,000. So therefore, we take the salary in D10 and we're going to make it bigger by multiplying it by the assumption value in cell C4, which we make into an absolute cell address because when we copy this function down, we do not want the reference to cell C4 to change. Now if false, we take the salary in D10 and increase it by the assumption value in C5. Again, I use the F4 key to quickly convert C5 into an absolute cell address. And that's it. Click OK and then you can copy that formula down for all the people on the list. Now a nested IF function allows you to have more than two choices but still based on a single logical test. So what you're doing is you're putting an IF function inside of an IF function. So for example, if department is A, $500. If department B is $400. If department C is $200, otherwise zero. So you can identify that there are four choices in this IF function, which makes it a little difficult now to use the insert function feature here because it will not all fit. So we have to carefully uh, enter a nested IF function at the keyboard. If so we'll start. If department is A, $500. So look at the department, which is in cell B10. Does it equal A? And A is text, so it has to be inside quotation marks. Comma. That's either true or it's not. If it's true, 500. Comma. Now, there's one argument box left in the if function. That's where we begin another IF function. Complete. So we ask another question. B10 equals B, comma. If that's true, then we want Excel to select 400, comma. Now the third box of the second IF function is where we put in another IF function. So we'll ask the third question. B10 does it equal C? If that's the case, we want to select 200, comma. Now there's one box left in the third IF function. So if it's not A and not B and not C, then the choice is zero. That's our fourth choice. So to have four choices, you only need to nest three IF functions. And we finish this long function by putting in three brackets at the end, one for each IF function. 
and then copy down and you can quickly assess whether your answers are correct. So department D, the answer is zero. Department B, the choice is 400. Department A, the choice is 500. I'll give you another example of an if function, but this time working with numbers, not text. So it's a little bit more complicated. So here again, how many choices do we have? We have high is one of our choices, medium is the second choice, and low is our third choice. So three choices means two if functions working together. So equals if salary over 100,000. So the salary value is in cell D10 greater than 100,000. Remember, no commas in these numbers. But there's a comma in between arguments. So if that's true, the first choice is high. High is text. Text has to be inside quotation marks. Comma. Now the third part of the first if function is where you put in another if function. This time, we ask the question, salary greater than 50,000, comma. Now, what's important is the logical operator remains a greater than. So if you start with a greater than in the first logical test, then you continue with a greater than in the second logical test. So we're asking the logical tests in a logical order. Okay, so if D10 is greater than 100,000, we have a choice. If it's not, it means it's less than 100,000. So now we're asking if it's less than 100,000, but it's greater than 50,000, which means it's in between those two numbers, then the choice is medium, comma. Now there's one argument left, one choice left in the third box of the second if function. So if the choice is not high and it's not medium, then it must be the last choice, which is low. So you do not start another if function here. You don't need to. Two if functions working together, two brackets at the end, and then copy down for everyone on the list. Now VLOOKUP is an option to use instead of a nested if function. But it's better in the sense that it's really not limited by the number of choices. A nested if function, technically you could have up to 64 functions nested in one formula, which gives you 65 choices. If you have more than 65 choices, then you have to use a lookup function. Because a lookup function is set up in a table and your choices in a column in a table can be up to a million. So before you can use a lookup function, you have to set up a lookup table. And this is the tricky part. So now you have to begin to identify what goes into the first column of a lookup table and what's in the second column of a lookup table. The first column contains your criteria. What are you looking at? And the second column contains your choices. So in this example, if salary over 100,000, which is the same example we used in column G, we're looking at the salaries. So the first column has to contain salaries and the second column will contain the choices high, medium, low. So when we're entering the first column of numbers in a lookup table, and they're numbers. You enter single numbers, single numbers that start with a zero and then go up in ascending order. So we start with zero. So at zero, I'm sorry, I'm going to move that over. At zero, the choice is low. Right? That would be the choice we make. If the salary is zero, the category is low. So what's the next single number higher than zero 
that generates a different choice. So at what number does the category change to medium? And in this case, according to the question, between 50,000 and 100. So it's 50,000 that generates the choice of a medium. Anything from zero to 49,999 is low, but at $50,000, the category switches to medium. So what's the next single number higher than 50,000 that generates the last choice, which is high? Now I have to be careful here. It becomes high when the salary is over 100,000. So it's not exactly 100,000. So let's say 100, thousand and one then it becomes high all right so you've created the lookup table that will be used in the lookup function now we can generate the VLOOKUP if you'd like to use the insert function we'll look for VLOOKUP there are three boxes that are bolded that we have to fill in so the value we're looking up is the value inside of our database table. And it's the salary. So we look at the first person's salary in D10. We compare it to the table that we've created outside the table and press F4 to make that into an absolute reference. We don't want the table range to change when we copy the VLOOKUP down. And the column index number is the number of the column that represents the choices to be made. And since we only have two columns in the table, it's the second column that will give us the choice. And now we can copy it down and you can see that column G and column H both give you the exact same result. Now, when you combine an if with an and or an or logical test, then you still only have two choices, but now you can have more than one logical test. Okay, so if department is A and the location is Toronto. So those are two logical tests, but the choices are only show me some asterisks or leave the cell blank. So only two possible choices, but this time we have two logical tests connected with the word and. So that's how you would look, um, you would use a simple if function to begin with, but you're putting the and function inside the logical test. So if department, so that's B10 equals A, comma, because that's one logical test. And the second logical test is location, which is C10 equals Toronto. And again, Toronto is text. It has to be in quotation marks. And then close the bracket for the AND function. So both of these logical tests have to happen. B10 has to equal A and C10 equals Toronto. If that's true, We'll put in a couple of stars inside double quotation marks to leave the cell blank. Two double quotation marks, nothing in the middle. And we could just as easily have used an OR function here instead of AND to give us a slightly different result. It all depends on the question. And then double click down and you can see down here in cell I15 that department is A and the location is Toronto so the little stars show up here. And the last thing I will show you to prepare for the case is the index match. So when you work together with those two functions you can find what you're looking for. So for example what we want is the user to enter something into cell G4, any ID number, and then underneath that, the salary of that ID number should automatically display. So, index 
is the function used to show you what it is you want to see. So if I want to see the salary, then the index is set up to show me the salary. And the match is set up to show me which row in the salary column contains the data that I want. So let's begin. All right, we'll select where the index match function goes, and that's in G5. And we'll bring up the index function. And we, ma we make the first choice. Just select the very first choice that comes up. So an array is just a special kind of range. So just think of it in your own mind as a range. Or it's a column of numbers. Remember, index is what it is we want to see. So in this case, we want to see the salaries. So the array will be the column of salaries starting at D10. So I will select the entire column of salaries because that's what it is what we want to see. Now, which row number in the salary column are we looking for? Well, that's where the match function comes in. Now, this time we're not getting any tooltips here to help us fill in the blank. So you have to know how to set up a match function. The match function starts with, well, what are you looking at? And what we're looking at or matching is the ID that is going to go into cell G4. So we're matching G4, comma, where does G4 come from? It comes from column A. It comes from the ID column. So we're going to select the ID column, comma, and put in a zero. And the zero at the end of a match function means it must be an exact match. We're exactly looking for a particular ID. Then we have to close the bracket, and we're done. Now, it's telling us not available because there's nothing in cell G4. But if we go into G4 and put 1 to represent ID 1, you can see that the salary matches. If we put in ID number 2, you can see now that the salary matches. And that concludes the review to prepare you for case number 7.